Welcome back. As you can see, we got the laptop out, so it's going to be tutorial time. All right, so today we're talking about ADA compliance. All right, what is ADA compliance? Well, ADA compliance stands for the Americans with Disability Act. In 1990, this act was passed to prevent discrimination against people who have disabilities. Now, this act also now extends to the internet. So that's what we're going to go over today. This is going to be part of a bigger series where I'm going to go over the different pieces of Lighthouse. And Lighthouse is the Google tool used in order to make sure that you are hitting the marks on where you need to be for great web experiences. So those four different breakdowns in the Lighthouse tool are as follows. There's ADA compliance, there's best practices, there's SEO, and then there's the most important one that everybody freaks out about, which is performance. I'm going to go over each and every one of them, and I'm going to explain to you exactly how they all come together. All right, let's jump into what we're going to do here. So one of our clients, Posh Bag Boutique, has allowed us to use their website as an example to go through how we take their website from a pretty good to a perfect score on ADA compliance. So not all of the things that you're going to see me go through are going to be relevant for your store. Each individual store has its own set of challenges. It really comes down to the design decisions that you have made when building out your website. Now, while I go through each one of these, I'm going to explain what the error was, what I did to fix it, and how I used my best judgment in order to make sure that this was ADA compliant. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is there's a delicate balance that we need to strike here. We need to strike a balance between what we want to see on a graphic front and, and a branding front, as well as what we want to see on a compliance front. And we're going to try and walk that line so that we get the best of both worlds. However, I should note right up front is that there are going to be situations where you're going to have to make the decision, do I go the ADA compliant route or do I go my branding route? All right, so I'm going to throw the website up on the screen now. Okay, it's important to understand that when you're doing this kind of investigation in your website, you need to be in an incognito browser. And the reason is, is because Chrome has a bunch of plugins that you can install, and each one of those plugins can impact your speed performance when looking at a website. So best rule of thumb, load up everything in an incognito browser, and then we can go through and check everything out. Now, I want to issue some caveats here. Because we're working on Shopify, Shopify has a thing called Preview Theme. And Preview Theme allows us to preview a theme before we publish it. However, the Preview Theme, not intended to be a live theme, may impact some of your results. So the results that I'm going to show you on the screen, we're going to do a comparison from where it was before to where it is now, but we're not going to be looking at this as the final product. Once we publish it and come out of the Preview Theme, that's when we're going to be able to see the final, final product. The last thing that I want to mention is we're going to be focusing specifically on this video on ADA. What I have found over the years of doing this is if you focus primarily on ADA first, the other numbers tend to come up automatically. So doing something right on ADA is going to impact your best practices, it's going to impact your SEO, and overall once you've done all of those, that's when it's going to look at performance. You only want to look at performance as the last metric that you adjust because you want to start from the bottom and work your way up. All right, now let's jump into the, the website. So here we've got the original website that came up. And if we go and we run our report and we run a specific uh, Lighthouse report, I'm going to show you how you get there. So to run a report, you right click on the page and you go to inspect. This is going to bring up the Google Inspector. Now, this may be overwhelming if you've never seen the Google Inspector before, but I'm going to try and walk you through the pieces that we're concerned with. So if we go on to the Google Inspector, at the end of the list along the top, there is going to be one that's called Lighthouse. Now, Lighthouse is going to come up and it's going to give us a way to generate a report. So we're going to go and hit Generate Report, and we're going to start generating out the report of what Lighthouse looks for on your website. Now, before I go and do that, the number one thing you want to do is we first want to look at mobile. Mobile being the dominant platform now on the internet, everything needs to be mobile first. Desktop can look great, and that's that's and you have a lot more room on desktop, but generally speaking, if you get the mobile right, everything else takes care of itself. We're going to select best practices, we're going to select accessibility, and we're going to select SEO. You'll notice that I didn't select a progressive web app. And a progressive web app is a specific case that we're going to cover in another video. For this, we're really going to be looking at the accessibility. And when I talk about accessibility in ADA, they're interchangeable. 
All right, so we're going to go and generate out the report. Now, it's going to take a few minutes for it to run this report because it has to go and test each individual um, setting and as well as it's simulating the throttle. So by removing cache and simulating the throttle, we can see what the what it's going to look like if you're using a mobile phone on a bad carrier network. Maybe you're in a place that doesn't have 5G or maybe you don't have 4G. Maybe you even don't even have 2G. There's lots of places in the world that are just on G. Um, so we're going to have a look at what the accessibility came back with. So as we can see here, when we're running the theme on accessibility, we've got an 89. Now that's pretty good, um, but I think we can get this thing up to uh, 100. So if we click on accessibility, it's going to jump down to the, the list of items that it has flagged as things that are not accessibly compliant. Now I want to talk about one thing quickly here. Using the Google Inspector Lighthouse tool is kind of like using a metal detector. So if you're on the beach and you're using a metal detector, the metal detector is going to tell you when there's a metal when there's metal below your feet, but it's not going to tell you what kind of metal it is. I mean, there are metal detectors that'll tell you the type of metal, it can tell you whether it's copper or iron or what have you, but it's basically giving you an idea. You're not going to know exactly what the object is until you dig into it. So the same thing is with Lighthouse, is it's going to give you an indication that there might be a problem there, but if you dig into it and you you find actually this is a decision that we made that we just sim simply forgot about and it's something that we need then you have to leave it the way it is and you have to accept the the lighthouse rating the most important thing to remember is that the numbers on lighthouse are not percentages they are out of a hundred they're just to give you an indication of where you're going all right now with all that said let's jump into the first error here all right, let me show you the both websites side by side of what I've changed and what it used to be. So on the left hand side here, we have what it used to be. And on the right hand side, we have what I've changed it to. Now, keep in mind that we are looking at this on a tablet view because my monitor is not wide enough to see this whole thing on desktop view. Now, if we want to switch over to a desktop view, I can take this slider and I can move it over slightly and then we can, we can go back and forth to see specifically what each piece is. So the next big one that came up on the list is sufficient contrast ratio between the background and the foreground for text. Now, this is the most important one when it comes to uh, color blindness. So if you have a look at this item on the left here, we can see that um, the contrast ratio between authentic luxury and the image behind it is not enough for it to stand out. And one of the problems is, is that because we're using an image that has multiple different colors, as you can see, we have black and we have white, and they, they slide behind it, we can't guarantee that there's going to be sufficient contrast when it's at different sizes. So what I have gone and done is I have modified the buttons to have backgrounds on them. Now, obviously the original version of this site looked great when it was over here on the left hand side and you could see the contrast but because we're working in a responsive environment and things need to move back and forth we need to be able to see it across all of the different sizes so adding this black background behind it gave me a sufficient number a sufficient contrast ratio between the text and the background now, there are other things that you can do in order to create a, uh, a division. You can put a shadow on it. You can put a border on it. I chose to use a uh, black background because I thought it worked well with the overall design of the site. All right, so if we come down again, um, now this is another thing that we had to do as well. Um, free shipping across North America. Again, as you can see on the left-hand side here, the N and the O are getting lost in the buckle. But on the right-hand side, you get a much better contrast of the items that you are, are, are trying to show. So simply by adding a background to the text, making it somewhat transparent, I'm able to get those contrast ratios. Now we're gonna have a look at the text now. So um, if we have a look at the one on the right here, we can keep going along with this similar uh, theme of contrast ratio. The color of gold that was used for the branding of this site has not enough contrast between uh, text and a white background. So if you have a look at the one on the left here, this is the original color. On the right, I went and I modified it slightly to make it a little bit darker to really hit that line of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. 
Now you might be asking, how do I know whether a color is acceptable or not? Well, there's this great website that you can use. So if you use the web aim contrast checker, what this, what this website will allow you to do, it will allow you to put in your foreground and your background color, and then adjust the lightness of either one of them, lightness and the darkness of either one of them in order to give you a contrast rating. And then on the right hand side, it will tell you what your contrast is. So as you move the slider back down, you'll see your contrast ratio goes down and then it will show you down below whether you pass and fail. So what I did is I went and I grabbed the color of the text on the first side of things and I placed it in there and I dragged the lightness to the way of the darker as close as I could get it so it passed all of the different contrast items and then I stopped. I didn't want to go any farther. I still wanted to stay with inside the same color space of the gold color that's being used. But again, this is coming back to a branding discussion around whether that color is a good color or not. Now, obviously, once you make one of these changes, there's going to be cascading changes that you're going to need to make all the way down the line. So not only was it res uh, responsible for me to make the change of the color of the of the, the price, but I also needed to go and make those changes on subsequent pages. Now, for the sake of this demo, we're only going to stick to the index page. But once I've done this index page, it's important to go and tackle the collection page and the product page, because when you have a look at Shopify's rating, they're going to be rating you on mobile for product, index, and collection page, and then they're going to be taking an average of all of those. Um, on many of the themes that come from Shopify, especially ones that come out of the Shopify theme um, store, there's a big, big requirement to make sure that they are as ADA compliant as they can be. But the one thing to keep in mind is you can make a theme that's ADA compliant right out of the box, but as soon as you start adding content to it, things start changing. And by things start changing, what I mean is the decisions that you're going to make, you need to make sure that you think, think them through so that you're not impacting your ADA compliance because you maybe didn't have the content there. All right, now that we finished going through the individual pages, I'm now going to show you where we're at. All right, I'm super, super excited to show you that we've been able to get to an accessibility of 100. Um, now, like I said with the previous, and this is on mobile, um, like I said when in the beginning of the video, if you work on accessibility first and then go to SEO, then go to best practices, all of those numbers will cascade up. And what you can see is the performance has actually increased, the best practices has increased, and the SEO has increased. Now, uh, the caveat that I want to talk about here, this is on mobile. If we have a look here, oops, let me pull it up on desktop. On desktop, we're doing even better. So desktop, we've got 100% on accessibility. We've got 90% on the performance. Best practices are at 79 and SEO is at 92. Now I want to talk a little bit about why the SEO is 92. And the reason is, is because we're using the Shopify preview.com URL. This is designed so that it doesn't get indexed by Google, which will automatically give you a lower rating on SEO. And this is one of those examples of where Something is being used in a testing situation that will not be used in a live situation, but is skewing the results. So if you were to go and run this website on a regular browser, what you'll actually see is this will come up to 100. So um, it's just something to keep in mind is that when you're using, a, you can never fully duplicate a live situation. You can just get as close as you possibly could. All right, that's it for me today. I recommend that if you guys have items that you don't know how to uh, do, place them in the comments down below and we will we'll work over them together. There's very likely some accessibility items in there that uh, have some strange, strange cryptic wording and sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure out what they were. So I'm here to help. Please place them down below and I will do my best to get back to you. That's it for me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you can get notified when the next video in this series comes out and we will see you guys in the next one.